everybody and welcome to another episode of Mental Architecture, Building the Mind, One Moment at a Time. I'm Howard Blumenfeld and I'm the author of the book, which is available exclusively on Amazon. So today I'm going to pick up where I left off in my last video in No Decisions and talk about genetic memories and deja vu. The idea behind genetic memories is that the certain behaviors and actions that you do might actually be influenced by your ancestors. So it's one thing to have your behaviors influenced by your parents or your friends or other people around you. And we all know that happens. Like if we're around others, certainly it's gonna influence our decision making. But what about things that are completely and entirely beyond our control, such as, you know, our great grandfathers, our great grandmothers, and the actions and decisions that they made, do those somehow make their way into our chromosomes and influence our behavior either in direct or indirect ways. So something that happened like almost a century ago is still affecting the descendants of the people that went through it. That's incredible. That means if you go through an intense, you know, emotional experience, there's a chance that your offspring and their offspring could inherit some of the changes that were brought on by that environmental change. Now we don't know if these changes were caused directly by the triggering event or if these people just had lowered cortisol levels, but it still is a very interesting finding. While it's not evidence of genetic memories, what it definitely can show is that certain hormonal changes passed down by your ancestors, which are totally out of your control, could influence the types of reactions you have to things and maybe even the decisions that you make. So these same researchers, you know, in looking for evidence of genetic memories went to a very simple species, a species of roundworm. And what they did is they genetically engineered this roundworm who'd never glowed before to glow. So basically they would glow in warm environments only. And so when they, in, when they genetically modified this roundworm, they initially glowed very, very faintly in a cold environment. When they were exposed to the warmer environment, they glowed much more brightly. Now it turns out when the worms were returned back to that cold environment, they were still glowing, which was a surprise to the researchers. And in 11 successive generations of roundworms, the worms continued to glow in both the cold and the warm environments, which was rather shocking, showing that this behavior was learned over a course of all these generations or passed down and somehow inherited. Like a certain behavior was basically picked up by roundworms that were 11 generations removed from the original ones that were experimented on. And so while, you know, there's some limitations to this result, Roundworms have very short lifespans, but you know, it does show that maybe certain memories or learned behaviors pass their way on down over successive generations and that maybe ones that are advantageous to the species survival. And, you know, maybe glowing for a roundworm was something that was advantageous to it. I don't really know why, but this is just a very simple example. And so you can naturally extrapolate this to human behaviors. I mean, if you think about families, a lot of families have problems that run in the families, you know, whether it's mental illness, addictive behavior, compulsive behaviors, those kinds of things, they can run in families. And, you know, if you look back successive generations, it's not unusual to find examples of grandparents who also suffered from similar ailments. So uh, is that a genetic memory? It's a little hard to say if it's a memory. What, how would you define it as a memory? I mean, it is an experience. It is something that the person goes through. It's a characteristic. But I think they're all kind of in the same stratosphere. Now, real genetic memories would be, like I said earlier, really hard to prove. And I think even the interpretation of them is a little up in the air because, I mean, if we were to take it literally, that would mean that you would actually be able to experience the memories of your ancestors, which would be virtually impossible to prove or disprove. It's not falsifiable because your ancestors are not here anymore. So how would we check your memories against them? Memories already have, you know, a lot of subjective nature to them. So we're just not going to go there. But I'm sure that each one of you watching this video has experienced the phenomenon known as deja vu before. So the idea behind deja vu is that you have an experience or you have a feeling and you know you've either experienced this before, you've felt this before, but you just can't pinpoint when or where. Some cultures or people have taken it as far to when they have this experience of deja vu that they actually think that this is a way of connecting with their ancestors or maybe they've been reincarnated as a different person and they're experiencing 
a new life, but they still have some memories of their past lives. So researchers have actually explored the idea of deja vu and the results will really surprise you. What they did is they hooked up some um, study participants into an fMRI machine, uh, which is a functional magnetic resonance imaging machine. If you ever had an MRI, it's, it's very similar to that. And they were looking for what areas of the brain were active during certain tasks, and particularly during the experience of deja vu. So a, a big challenge, right? These In a laboratory setting, these researchers had to get the participants to experience deja vu. So what they did is a very simple linguistic task is they read a list of words that were all interrelated to the, um, to the participants and they left the word that kind of links all these things together out. So for instance, they might say something like steering wheel, seat, roof, trunk, transmission, engine, and they'd maybe say another 12 words that are all associated with a car. So what they did is they asked the participants if they heard a word that started with the letter C, and they, and they said the keyword that started with the letter C. And while the participants said they hadn't heard that word, the word obviously being car, they said that the experience still felt familiar to them as if they had heard the word, even though they hadn't. Really interesting. So they experienced the sensation of deja vu of hearing that word, even though they hadn't heard the word. So what was going on in their brains? So you might expect that the hippocampus or the memory center of the brain was active during the experience of deja vu, but it actually turns out that memory center wasn't active really at all. Even though they were trying to remember something, the frontal lobes were the part of the brain that were active during the experience of deja vu. And what this suggests is that deja vu is actually a good thing. Deja vu is your brain's way of error checking memories. Basically a way of sifting through memories, whether they're real or false, and determining did I actually hear that or not. So it's really interesting that your frontal lobes could actually be involved in your working memory. Who would have thought that? So the experience of deja vu, as you know, is an unconscious experience. Nobody decides I'm going to experience deja vu right now. It just kind of happens. And so what's happening is your brain is fact checking. And your, your conscious experience of it is that very fact checking. Did I really hear that? Did I not hear that? Have I been here? Have I not been here? And so that whole experience of, of a certain kind of indecisiveness on a subconscious, unconscious level that's playing out in your consciousness is your brain's way of fact checking. And so if you've had deja vu, it's a good thing. It means your memory, your, your memory checking mechanisms in your brain are working properly. So thank you everybody for joining me for another episode of Mental Architecture. And I look forward to bringing you more next week. I am going to talk next week about sleep, dreaming, and metacognition. So basically, we're going to look at decision making when you're unconscious and also metacognition, which is thinking about thinking and how that all plays out. So it'll be an exciting episode. I hope you enjoyed this one. Please be sure to like, subscribe, and comment below. Make sure when you subscribe, you ring the bell to be notified of future videos. Uh, thank you very much. Have a great day.